Hello and welcome to a new series titled Upper Green. I'm George Call. This is a three-part series and um, I divide the painting up into basically three sections. It's kind of a learning tool, the way I learned, and I want to pass it on to you. It's a common way to get started with a painting. And um, so, um, stay tuned and you'll see how I do that step by step. Get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get critiques. See how other people uh, look at your work. It's always good to see another perspective. And uh, don't be intimidated by a white canvas. Let's get started. All right. Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series titled Upper Green. Boy, beautiful place uh, out of Pinedale, Wyoming. Jenny and I were there with the uh, llamas few years back and we packed in with our pack llamas back then but now I'm getting lazy I've, uh, I've got a trailer and it's a little easier I like to heat but I still like to get out and paint so uh, you can see I've got my palette all laid out ready to go and uh, I am going to uh, direct you to, if you want to see my basic palette and I build up from there is uh, you'll find it on my website georgecall.podia.com backslash and um, if you maneuver around there you'll see my my basic palette which I think is a great um, one for landscapes all right so um, I've got 30 minutes here in this uh, session and what I want to do in this first part of a three-part series, part one, is to block in, try to cover this whole canvas with some sort of thin paint uh, value color and build a foundation. And that's what I'm doing today, is building a foundation. However, I don't have my brushes out, so I'm looking down below here to figure out what my brushes will be. I'm going to start with a drawing brush, which is going to be a little stiffer. It's a uh, Rosemary 2025. It's more like a hog hair. Probably is a hog hair. And it's a number three. Usually I use my old worn out ones. That one's pretty good. But I don't have a good worn out one handy in my box right now. This one's not too bad. There. That's kind of worn out. And I'll use that one. All right, so um, I'm going to start with uh, figuring out where my foundation lines are going to be and uh, come up with some shapes uh, using a line drawing. Usually, as you can see, if you've been following me, I usually do a, a sketch. But today I forgot to do one, and I've got to get rolling here. Time's a wasted, so I'm going to do blue and gray, ultra blue, and a light gray called Ice Blue by Richardson. It's a lot of ways to make gray, but um, we will get started. I don't know if I made it off there. Can I get a little bit more gray, blue? Should do it. I've been worried about working with uh, two little jars of turp. One's uh, for more slop, and the other one's a little cleaner. And uh, so I'm going to have a base down here somewhere, and then there's another base above it. Uh, which is kind of where the mountains or the trees start, somewhere in here. And then there's a little bit of meadow, and then there's river in here. So you can see I'm kind of working out where my shapes are going to be. Now one thing I know is there's a big anchor here, and I'm going to call that Big tree here. And that's going to go in here somewhere. 
And then there's little trees here and more little trees in here. And I'm just going to try to figure out a few rough shapes for them. And you can see I'm going in cautiously because I may have to erase this if it's in the wrong spot. That's why it's important to do some sketches first. All right, and then there's a big mountain that goes off here. That's a hump. It's a hump. Hump. Got to get a little bit of turp on my brush. Being so little, it doesn't hold a lot. But if you get a little uh, gamsol, odorless gamsol on there, you'll be you'll be doing okay. And down here are trees. And then in here is a, a single tree. And more trees up in here. I'll put another one so it's not so lonely. Right up in here. And then there's background trees right in here. I'll tell you, this is one of the prettiest hikes there is. I think I'm about six miles in from the trailhead at the Upper Green. The only problem with getting there is the rutted road. It's just so bumpy, and I had a llama trailer behind me, and the poor llamas were going, bong, bong. but they made it. Now behind here is a... Now let's get this big guy in here and somewhere in here it goes like this and has a thing like this and I might even start shading one side of it and then behind it is another Let me just get a little bit more damsel on here. Get a little mileage on this brush. It's like adding a little ink to the pen. And then there's, I think I have to move him over just a little bit, maybe there. And as I said, it's good to go in thin so you can erase. So I just dipped my rag in there and that might be a little too big for for me. So I will reduce him to something like that. Like two humps on that thing. All right. There's also a nice streak of stone here coming down. It looks like it was a landslide in prehistoric times and trees have never been able to grow back on it. All right, so I'm going to step back and see how it looks from, you know, 10, 15 feet away. And I think it can work pretty good. And I think we, we will have some clouds up in here. And I'll worry about those a little bit later. And I think it's now time to start thinking about how to make this a little darker and get some right values in here. So, I normally start, and it's pretty conventional, is to figure out, either choose your where your lights or your darks are going to be, and since I'm on a light canvas anyway, so it's pretty obvious I need to start figuring out where my darks are going to be. So, let's uh, start making uh, pine tree cover. 
So let's go with Ultra Blue and uh, Cad Yellow Medium. Cad Yellow Medium. Ultra Blue. Cad Yellow. I'm going to add some transparent oxide brown to it just to give it some warmth. And you can see that's a nice. Nice dark green. Some people will say, well, that looks like a sap green. And as an early painter, I use sap green all the time for this kind of stuff. But why buy another paint when you can just make it? And I think I probably should be using my other brush, but I might as well use this one because I'm going to be scrubbing so much. And I'm sorry, I hope I'm not getting my shoulder in the camera. And I just use a kind of a back and forth motion to kind of describe the how the limbs come out. With pine trees, uh, as they go higher, the the pine trees start getting an upward. The limbs start getting an upward look, and as they get lower, they're heavier, and they they uh, kind of have this downward look. And I think I probably got too big with my trees. I'll make a judgment on that soon. And let's go over to this side and do the same. This is why I, I start with flats and I make them into filberts. Those are brush uh, descriptions. Because I work on the side of my brush so much. The reason I do that, I don't know if it's a good habit or a bad habit, but that's where all the paint is. There's very little paint on that very tip of the painting, or the brush. And of course you do need that sometimes. It looks like there's a couple of trees out in here. And then... And I know there's light on these trees and so forth, but... I think I can work on that later. All right, let's add a little bit more blue and brown to this mixture. And come in here to where there's some real good darks down on this corner. And I think what that does is kind of connects us to this. See that dark coming in? All right. Now we're going to go over to the bag, somewhere in here. And the bag is, I'm going to make it higher, I think. And it eventually goes up in this area over to the right. So upriver is this way toward the mountains, and downriver is down here. This is some dark. And then this is not so dark. So it's more of a dry brush. Routine here. And I'll bring the dark even further. And I see some banks here. Kind of come out and in and out again. 
That's my sandbags. And I'm going to add some ceruleum to this mixture. Ceruleum. A little bit of light viridian, light viridian, light viridian. Don't have light viridian, add a little white to your viridian. And I'm going to Put that in this area right in here. Oop, picked up some contamination there. Looks like I got a little maples in my mixture. And try to get down to the bottom of your painting. So many easels have a, you know, some sort of a groove in there, so it's hard to get down there and paint unless you pull it out of that groove. All right, I'm getting back, and it's time to, I think, go to a medium gray, and I think medium gray is going to be in some of these areas here. Richardson has a nice thing called cold gray. It's nice. You can certainly make grays. You know, red and viridian, or a lizard and viridian, and white makes a nice gray also. Uh oh. My phone talking to me. What's going on here? Okay. It says I should be in class right now. Smartphones, you know, they keep telling you what to do, or what you should be doing. And I am doing it. All right. So it's time to get up in the upper parts of this painting. And I'm ready to do that. So let's get rid of this little guy, this little brush. And I'm cleaning him. And I'm going to look at my pile. Is there anything I can bring it all together and I don't think I have enough in there to do anything with. So I will start with a new mixture. Just using a razor blade scraper that I got from the auto parts store or Amazon. I like a long handle one. And let's go with some uh, ultra blue and some medium gray. Medium gray. I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin to it. I've got to make a big pile of this. And a little bit of transparent oxide red. And some more gray. So I'm going to make a lot of gray and I'm going to make it on one side. So one's more blue, one's a little bit more gray. It's kind of a blue-gray. And we will get started. Wrestling around trying to get my brush picked up. It's, you know, you got when you're working with gloves, you gotta come up with all kinds of problems. So down here I think is a darker blue. Down in here. It's still too blue. Let me put this gray stuff in here. It's still pretty thin paint I'm using. This is the blue gray. I 
And now we're going to go to a lighter gray. Add some blue to it. See how I just work out of the same pile? I mean, it's on the same mountain, it's kind of related. And I'm going to be changing gears here just a little bit. That seems to be working. Again, keep it thin. There's another part of this mountain that's kind of peeking out right here. With some darker blue. And then some lighter blue. Lighter gray. So I'm going to change brushes or clean this one thoroughly. And again, I'm using, went back to that number three. And I'm going to get some light gray and some white and a little contamination that was in my brush. And I'm working on the big bone. And I'm going back to the grays and getting this part in. Now, I know you people that want to get into detail are just biting at the chip here to try to get into detail. I'm just trying to get big shapes with a good shot at the value color. We'll get detail later. All right, I'm going to get some of this gray blue and put it over on this side of the mountain. I got to get a little bit more blue in there, a little bit more ultra blue, ultra blue in here. And I need some ultra blue and a little lighter down in this area. There's like a shadow area here. See, there's a... The value isn't too much different than this mountain, but it's a different value color. And I'm going to add more white to that as I go back. More white. There's a mountain behind it that has a lot of this in it. starting to look like something. So you have the darkest dark in here, then it goes medium, and then it goes light. Okay, now we need to make kind of a, a foreground light here that has some warmth to it, I think. So I'm mixing up some white and uh, some of this light gray stuff, and I'm going to add just a touch of Hansa yellow to it. Yellow. Gonna get a little bit more blue in. And let's see what that does. I'll try it over here. No, it's not cutting it, is it? Make it a little lighter. A little lighter. And I'm gonna put that in right here. I need some mountain out behind here, so I'll put some mountain here. And I think I need some little bit of shadow and crags coming down here. All right. Let's work on the sky. But maybe before
before we get there, let me check my time. Ugh, I'm getting kind of tight. I want to get some yellow ochre. Blue, yellow ochre. Just a touch of emerald. Emerald and put my note down in here. I think that'll work for now. So I think another way to describe this first part of the painting is cover up a lot of canvas with value color. And I think I need to bring this as a level right here. Okay, clean the brush, get ready for the sky. So let's figure out where we're going to put some clouds and uh, go from there. I'm going to save the light stuff I have here because I might be able to use that because we're going to the sky. But I need some clean white. And that's what I'm putting on now. So let's start out with some white and I think I could probably jazz things up here a little bit with some Sevres blue if I can find it and I can't. So Cerulean is going to work just perfectly. very nicely for now. I'm hoping I didn't get any paint on my sleeve. You know, once you become an, uh, you know, an oil painter, you devote a lot of clothes to uh, painting clothes, even though you weren't expecting to do so. Okay. There you go. Let's get a bigger brush. And I'm going to get this number 6279. Kind of a medium stiff brush. And I'm going to figure out some clouds. And I just use the canvas as the as the cloud because I'm a little short on time. And we'll have another cloud up in here, kind of going off. Up here, here, and this is blue sky here. Add a little bit of turkey, get some mileage out of this thing. And at least that's a start for where the clouds will be. And that is a block in. We've covered the canvas, and I think it's working pretty good. Let me clean my number six here. And Look over, I know it's loose and we have a lot of white canvas coming through, so what I'd like you to do for homework is cover up these little canvas peekaboos that are coming through, and uh, we'll be ready to start on part two, balance, uh, in part two, that would be tomorrow. Because what I do to uh, with my taping, I, I'm really fresh in the morning and I really like to just get my stuff uh, when I have my most energy for my canvas at the uh, early in the morning. So I started this around 7.30 to quarter eight this morning and that's usually a good time for me to start a nice quick painting. And of course I have other paintings to do because I have galleries and shows 
and things like that I'm getting ready for. <clears throat> and I need to think about creating inventory and making frames. Okay. Enough of me complaining. Let's bring this to a close and say thank you so much for coming by for uh, part one of Upper Green. All right.